تحيه يعطيكم الف عافيه طيب انا راح ابلش تسجيل ونكمل محل ما وصلنا المره الماضيه بسم الله آه خليني اعمل شير سكرين في البدايه وارسل سكرين تمام ظهر الشاشة يا جماعة ظهر دكتور هلا آخر شيء تكلمنا عنه المرة الماضية كان يتعلق ب two situations of the liver that describe the wolfed state and the fasting state certain details of the metabolic Uh, pathways that we could face according to the molecules that are going to be metabolized. So as we will start, we will start with the carbohydrates and metabolism, and we will discuss how the liver uh, is going to metabolize or metabolize uh, the carbohydrate molecules as well as the other macro molecules. digestion process, Uh, uh, now we are going to discuss some issues that are related to the accessory organs that are associated with the digestive system or other organ like accessory organ liver and then we are going to move to the next two chap uh, slides or to next lecture that will uh, discuss certain specific issues of the liver فمحاضرتنا اليوم فيها شوي details فبدنا نتحمل بعض شويه وهاي details كثير مهمه في diagnosis in the future خصوصا انه في بعض الموليكيولز راح نشوفهم انترستنج انه نعرف كيف الليفر بتعامل معهم. هلا بالنسبه للكلاسيكال بير سي الكلاسيكال ميتابوليزم اوف ذا كاربوهيدريتس هاو ذا ليفر از جوينج تو ديل وذ ذا كاربوهيدريتس از يو نو انه الليفر هو عباره عن ستوريج سايت اوف ذا جلايكوجين از ويل از ذير ويل بي جلايكوليسيز to produce uh, pyruvate if we are talking about the uh, wolfed state and conversion of certain macro, uh, I mean, carbohydrate molecules to other types of um, carbohydrates or monosaccharides in order to uh, uh, face the demands of the body for these uh, types of carbohydrates and synthesis of acid sugars and protoglycans the most specific types of sugars and the pentose phosphate pathway as we learned before here for the production of NADPH molecules which are required for many functions and one of them is the anabolism or the glutathione reduction in the future in uh, oxidative stress that we could have in the body or in our cells. So How the uh, uh, talk about this very quickly on the carbohydrate molecules, how the liver is going to deal with the, these carbohydrate molecules, and mainly we'll focus on the glucose molecule. Uh, first of all, we know that we have GLUT type 2 as a, an abundant transporter um, uh, in, on the liver cells, as well as the GLUT kinase, and they have approximately high KM value, which means that in... You know, Uh, they are going to deal with of glucose, so it can glucose transporter or the glucokinase enzyme. Uh, uh, after uh, taking a meal, for example, or during the wolfed state, the glucose is going to be transported to the liver and it will be converted to glycogen, or it will be processed by glycolysis process as usual. And uh, for certain extent, we will have synthesis of uh, fatty acid uh, molecules and that's why we are going to form fats when we are taking carbohydrates. regulation. regulation glucose glucose بعد ما ندخل الجلوكوز عن طريق الجلوت ترانسبورتر وهذا الحكي موجود في الخلايا ولكن في الليفر له سبيشال كيس اوف ميتابوليك بوينت اوف فيو انه الجلوكوز لما بتدخل للخلايا اذا ضل يستمر في الدخول لحد ما وصل لكونسنتريشن ايكوال تو ذا اكسترنال 1 
we will say uh, what diffusion backward بمعنى اخر انه uh, if we have equal concentrations we will have equal transportation of the glucose in both directions واحنا هذا الحكي ما بدنا يعني we want to keep the glucose to be transported from the uh, plasma or from the blood to the cell and that's why the glucose is going to be converted to another molecule in order to reduce the what's called diffusion uh, force اللي هي بتعتمد على concentration gradient لانه هذا الترانسبورتر is concentration gradient dependent transporter to do that we, we need certain enzyme which is irreversible enzyme that is known as glucokinase or which belongs to a group of enzymes that are known as hexokinases كلنا نعرف ان الهكسوكينيسز هم مجموعه من الانزيمز اللي بتحول الجلوكوز لجلوكوستيكس فوسفيت واذر كاربوهيدريت مولكيولز از ويل هلا الجلوكينيز واحد منهم هو سبيشال تايب اوف هكسوكينيسز بمعنى اخر مش سبيسيفيك فقط للجلوكوز هو كمان بتعامل مع هكسوز شوجرز اور اذر هكسوز شوجر غريب شوي اللي هو اللوكاليزيشن ايشو The glucokinase can be localized either in the cytosol or in the nucleus. بمعنى آخر إنه can be transported in both directions. ممكن يضل في السيتوسول ويضل أكتف ويعم حول الجلوكوز للجلوكوز سيت. أو إنه ينتقل عن طريق conjugation with a regulatory protein which is known as glucokinase regulatory protein اللي هو GKRP. هلا متى بصير هذا الكونستريشن تبعهم متوائم بحيث إنه ينقلوا أو يصلهم ما يسمى localization to the nucleus or to the cytosol. So it depends on the glucose. So the glucose concentration is a player in this story or in this game by transporting or relocalization of the glucokinase to the cytosol while the glucose phosphate is responsible for the active, I, I mean, conversion of glucose phosphate to fructose phosphate is responsible for the conversion of the glucokinase to the binding form. protein, And then it will be localized to the nucleus. فالان وجود الانزيم من ناحيه سبيشال لوكيشن لوكيشن اوف ذيس انزيم سو اتس اوفر ذير اي مين ذا انزيم از بريزنت بات ذا لوكاليزيشن اوف ذا انزيم از ديفرنت اكوردنج تو ذا كونستريشن اوف ذا جلوكوز اور ذا ذا سكند برودكت اوف ذا جلوكوز فهيك بصير ريجوليشن لعمليه الكونفيرجن اوف جلوكوز تو ذا جلوكوز 6 فوسفيت Uh, usually, the, the regulation depends on the phosphorylation or sometimes feedback inhibition of certain uh, products. Hala, she after we talk about regulation, in respect to glycolysis, we have what is called the rate limiting step. We all know that it is activated by phosphofructokinase enzyme, which is type one, and this enzyme is activated by the low energy molecule, which is AMP, as well as the fructose 2,6-phosphate molecule. Uh, uh, and inhibited by ATP or straight. اللي هم هذول مؤشرات لوجود الطاقة. So there is no need for glycolysis. هذول مؤشرات ل low energy levels. So there is a need in order to produce energy. There is a need for the glycolysis uh, process to be activated. Again, we have feedback inhibition of the glucokinase or hexokinase by its molecule itself rather than the localization of the enzyme itself. Uh, another enzyme that could be regulated in the glycolysis process وعشان ما اخربطكم كثير احنا بنتكلم عن the first step the third step and the last step in the glycolysis اذا بتتذكروها اللي هي بتحول الفوسفوينيلبايروفيت لبايروفيت هذا الانزيم برضه اللي هو البايروفيت كاينيز انزيم is going to be regulated by phosphorylation or dephosphorylation it will be inactive by phosphorylation process and by هلا اللي بيعمل activation by glucagon hormone which is going to activate the signaling pathway that is responsible for the phosphorylation. هلا أنا ما بدخل ما بدي أدخل بكل التفاصيل هاي بس من أجل إنه نخلي الأمور زي ما بحكوا فيها common sense. The glucagon is representing the low glucose level اللي هو the fasting state or status. So under this condition there is no sense. Uh, or there is no logic in order to proceed with the glycolysis of chemical glycolysis. فمن المطلوب جدا إنه أنا أوقف الجلايكوليسيس فالفسفوريليشن واحدة من الأشياء اللي بتصير بسبب هذا الجلوكوجون هرمون اكتيفيشن for what we knew before اللي هو signaling pathway or signal transduction. مرة ثانية أنا ما بدخل بالتفاصيل هاي كلها الآن لأنه يفترض إنه مغطى بمكان آخر في البيوكيمستري. ولعنا تفاصيل اخرى مرتبطه بالجي اي تي سيستم. 
ولكن الخلاصه انه الفوسفوريشن از جوينج تو ان اكتيفيت بايروفيت كاينيز اللي هو اخر انزايم في الكلايكول از ويل از اذر انزايمز ذات كود بي فوسفوريت انتي اكتيفيت ديورنج ذيس بروسيس وما راح نتكلم عنهم موجودين خصوصا بالريت ليمتنج ستيب عشان اختصر هذا الموضوع من ناحيه هرمون ريجوليشن انسولين از ريسبونسبل فور ذا اكتيفيشن اوف ذا فيرست Third and the last step, while the glucagon is responsible for the inactivation or inhibition of the same steps, and these steps are also irreversible. They are controlling the glycolysis process. هلا هاي الرسمة في يوم الأيام كانت مزعجة للطلاب اللي بتكلم عن الأفسلين أو الجلوكاجون. How they are going to transduce signals. It was signal transduction, and then eventually you will have either phosphorylation of certain enzymes or dephosphorylation of The same enzymes by the presence of the insulin. The point is, we are going to regulate this enzyme, which is called phosphofructokinase type 1, either by activation or deactivation. One of the things that does activation is fructose 26 phosphate, which is generated by synthase type 2. I'm going to talk about the details of this, but just to know that. Or to remember the function of these hormones during the signal transduction on the liver cells. You know, they are activating either phosphorylation, either can be glucagon, or dephosphorylation if we have insulin. So, and both of them depend on the presence of the uh, cholesterol, uh, sorry, glucose molecule. Hala, اختصار لكل الموضوع كيف بيعمل liver metabolism للكربوهيدرات. We are going to uh, go through. This uh, table with situation of these hormones. So, well, first fructokinase type 2, it will be active if we have high concentration of glucose. Pyruvate kinase is going to be active. Glycogen synthase is going to be active. Why? Phosphorylase enzyme, who glycogen phosphorylase or phosphorylase kinase enzyme and glycogen phosphorylase enzyme, they are going to be inactive in this situation because we don't want to break down the glycogen. Since we are we having, or we we have have glucose at high concentration, dehydrogenase is going to be active as well as acetyl CoA carboxylase enzyme, and this molecule or this enzyme actually responsible for the synthesis of fats. So eventually, we will have glycolysis act is activated because of the activation of certain enzymes, fatty acid synthesis and the glycogen synthesis rather than degradation, vice versa. We have uh, uh, opposite uh, mechanism or completely different mechanisms to one, and eventually they will lead to glycogenolysis, fatty acid oxidation, and gluconeogenesis in order to provide the body with the glucose that is required for other tissues. This uh, figure is very complicated from the shape, but we have talked about it in a very simple way. وبيوضح لي كيف الجسم بيتعامل مع او الليفر سبيسيفيكلي بيتعامل مع الجلوكوز اند هاو اتس جوينج تو بي كونفرتد تو ليبيدز هذا الشيء اللي بدي اياه انا ما بدي اعرف كل ابني بابليك باث وي هيد جوينج تو كونفرت جلوكوز تو ليبيدز ات ذا اند اوف ذا دي هلا الاذر ثينجز ويل بي ديسكاست ان سبيسيفيك بوينتس خلصنا الكربوهيدرات ميتابوليزم نتكلم عن الليبيد ميتابوليزم وي هاف سبيشال ميكانيزم اوف فور سيرتين كايندز اوف ليبيد لما نتكلم خصوصا عن اللونج تشين فاتي اسيدز بيكوز دي ار ريبريزنتينج ذا ميجر فيول فور ذا ليفر ديورينج ذا بيريد اوف ستارفيشن اور فاستينج اند وي هاف سيستم ويتش از نون از بيركستومال اوكسيديشن سيستم لونج تشين فاتي اسيدز اللي هو كمان بيشبه البيتا اوكسيديشن ولكن هذا البيركسوسومال 1 which is somehow different from the بيتا اوكسيديشن بروسيس ذات وي ليرن بيفور بيتا اوكسيديشن خاص بالشورت والميديوم تشين فاتي اسيدز بينما هذا خاص باللونج تشين فاتي اسيدز وفي بيركسوسومال سيستم مسؤول عن هذا الموضوع هلا ان جنرال اف وي هاف ولف ستيت وي كود سينثيسايز فاتي اسيدز اند ليبيدز ايفينشولي اند ذيس Process requires you uh, some very limiting enzyme during the fatty acid synthesis. It will be the CoA carboxylase enzyme, which is responsible for the formation of uh, melanin CoA from acetyl CoA. Acetyl CoA is 
very well known molecule that will be generated from either carbohydrates or from amino acids and eventually they will be converted to melanin CoA and then to fatty acids so this melanin CoA is going to be converted to fatty acids and the, these fatty acids if they are if they are found in high concentration, they will of this enzyme by preventing the polymerization of the acetyl-CoA carboxylase enzyme. While the straight is responsible for the activation of the formation of the active form of this enzyme. Uh, we could convert the carbohydrates with amino acids to acetyl-CoA and then to fats eventually, and these fats are responsible for the regulation of the uh, enzyme that is responsible for the uh, production of the active acetyl-CoA or active malonyl-CoA as a precursor for the fatty acid synthesis. And of course, this process requires a certain amount of ATP. In order to synthesize fatty acids, we need, uh, or fats in general, I mean, we need the fatty acids that we generated by the fatty acid synthase enzyme. We didn't talk about it, but أشرنا إلى أن في عندنا رياكشن مهم جدا حتى نبلش في عملية الفاتي أسد سنتزيز الكاربوكسيليز إنسان بالإضافة لوجود الجلسرول فوسفيت مولكيول which is important for the synthesis of triglyceride حتى أصنع الفات لازم يكون في عندي فاتي أسد الجلسرول مولكيول in the active form the active form اللي هو الجلسرول في فوسفيت مولكيول هلا في شوية اختلاف بين الليفر والأديبوس تشو بالستوري تبعت الجلسرول فوسفيت موكيول uh, how it's going to be generated في عندنا two sources موجودين في الليفر responsible for the formation of glycerol 3 phosphate one of them is glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme and the other one اللي هو الجلسرول kinase enzyme which can deal with glycerol اللي هو naked glycerol if you would بينما في, ال... في الأديبوس تشو we have only one route triphosphate molecule. And let's make this all triphosphate molecule عشان أربط عليه الفاتي أسيد in order to generate fats. هلا if we have kind of star oxidation process for many molecules and including the the fats, I mean carbohydrates or or amino acids or fat molecules, the oxidation of these molecules will generate what's known as ketone bodies, and the ketone bodies. Are known as the following. There are three types of ketone bodies: the acetoacetate, as well as the acetone, which is a volatile molecule. These ketone bodies are generated by the liver uh, during the oxidation of fats, specifically when we have a starvation condition or when we have a, a diabetic condition, for example. And these ketone bodies are going to be transported to other tissues in order to supply with them with or as a fueling system or a fueling molecules, especially the central nervous system or the nerve cells and certain other types of cells. They rely on the ketone bodies. Metabolize ketone bodies themselves. يعني ما بقدر هو كمان مرة ثانية يستخدم الكوتون بادز as a source of energy. Why is that? Because the liver is lacking this enzyme which is known as thiophorase enzyme. So generally speaking, most of the tissues can deal with the ketone bodies because they can convert them back to acetyl-CoA and then acetyl-CoA in order to enter the Krebs cycle because the, these cells uh, have thiophorase enzyme which is responsible for the conversion of acetyl-CoA which is not present in the liver cells. So that's, that's why the liver is not capable of uh, metabolizing these ketone bodies. Uh, why the body is generating these ketone bodies? But as we learned before, we have a starvation situation, which means that we don't have glucose, which means eventually the, the insulin will be at lower concentration compared to the glucagon and epinephrine. And the situation will cause lipolysis, who are breaking down of lipids and production of fatty acids. And these fatty acids are going to be converted to acetyl-CoA and the accumulation of the acetyl-CoA will be uh, cause for the generation of keto acids or ketone bodies and eventually it will cause what's called ketoacidosis. From the share of the starvation situation or diabetic condition, is ketoacidosis condition or ketone body production. Of ketoacidosis means we have ketone body production. The other thing is lipids and carbohydrates, which is amino acid metabolism. الجدول يبدو مزعج ولكن just to know and to remember that we have a group of amino acids that we can use and the liver is the major site for the metabolism of these 
amino acids in order to generate these molecules. هلا انا بس بدي اتذكر يعني اشياء اساسيه ورئيسيه بهذا الموضوع، انا ما راح اسالك انه which amino acid is going to be converted to which product. Just to know that these amino acids in the liver can generate creatine or glutathione or purine pyrimidine اللي هم نيتروجين بيسز نستخدمهم احنا لنيوكليك اسيد سينثيسز اللي هم DNA with RNA molecules. Uh, a taurine molecule is also is go, going to be produced by cysteine in the liver. And we have sphingosine, hemoglobin, and certain other molecules that can be generated from the metabolism of amino acids. فالاشياء اللي انتم بتعرفوها ان جنرال ومشهوره جدا you have to know that the creatine is generated from amino acids as well as glutathione, purine, pyrimidine. Okay? So this is very important to remember. And in the future, I, I do believe in the Kerumor. But I'm going to go to the next one. Keep it with you. It's like that because the Hussle will cool fee tables. You are going to use them in the future, the near future. You have to use them in the 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 future. You have to use them فإذا صادفت حدا شاطر بالميتابوليزم راح يسألك تفاصيل معينة عن رياكشنز معينة أو حتى إنه هذا المولكيول من وين بيجي يعني على سبيل المثال الهيم مش معقول إنك ما تعرفش إنه هو أكثر أون لما تاخذ التفاصيل بهذاك الكورس أو بهذاك التريننج يو هاف تو نو إنه هو مكون من جلايسين وسكسين الكو إي لما بتدخل في سبيسيفيك ديسكربشن أوف ذا هيم سينثيسيس ف يعني إتس وورث تو نو ذات وي أر جنريتنج ذيس مولكيولز فروم أمينو أسيدز Okay, Hello. other things that can be synthesized by the liver, the blood coagulation factors and certain transporters, the transferrin for the iron, cellular plasmin, the haptoglobin, uh, and hemopoxic molecules. These are called, in general, uh, metal binding proteins because they contain metals like iron and copper. Uh, uh, lipid transporters like alkali protein B100. Uh, And apolipoprotein protein or up protein, the A1, as well as the alpha 1 antitrypsin, which is uh, working as a protease or elastase inhibitor. synthesized by the liver and they are uh, uh, doing certain important functions or in the body. amino acids, you know how the liver is going to metabolize these amino acids. The actually the major source of the uh, or uh, uh, the pool of the amino acids that are going to be metabolized by the liver include either alanine, which is generated from uh, the metabolism of other amino acids or what's called branch chain uh, amino acids and some other amino acids. All of these amino acids are going to be metabolized by the liver. And these amino acids are known as glucogenic amino acids. Why the liver is interested to synthesize or to convert these molecules to glucose? Because the liver is responsible for the uh, uh, supplying the body with the glucose. So that's why he is very selective in in, uh, uh, in choosing certain amino acids in order to uh, produce a glucose molecule. Halal the glucose molecule is going to be metabolized again and assume that it's going to be metabolized by the muscles. Well, it, the muscle cell. So we'll have a cycle of glucose and alanine. Then the glucose is not the nervous system, but one of the most important things is the nervous system. So we have something called glucose-alanine cycle. Uh, the, uh, the product or the byproduct, which is a toxic product of this process, is the ammonia that is mandatory to be converted to urea as a non-toxic product. So uh, the amino acids and proteins هما مولكيولز غير مفضلين لإنتاج الطاقة السبب إنه they generate uh, شكل أمونيا and the, this ammonia molecule is toxic that's why it's going to be converted to uh, urea هلا زي ما حكينا قبل شوي إنه we have cycle of uh, glucose that will be transported from the liver to the other tissues the peripheral tissues and after uh, the metabolism in these tissues will generate alanine as an amino acid that will be transported back to the liver and again generating glucose. So this is known as uh, uh, alanine uh, glucose cycle or glucose alanine cycle. 
قبل شوي موجود بشكل نقاط عشان انه لما بدك ترسم لوحدك يكونوا سهلين لانه ممكن الحكي احيانا ما بيكونش كافي للتفاصيل هاي اللي هو هاو وي ميتابولايز امينو اسيدز ان ذا ليفر اوكي سواء كانوا الالانين او البرانش تشين امينو اسيدز هلا الشيء المهم الاخر بدي احكي عنه اللي هو اليوريا سايكل اند جامبينج تو ذا يوريا سايكل اتسلف which will be in another slide بس هون اوكي okay. here we go وراح اكررها بعد شوي اعتقد في اذر اوكيشن as sharing two uh, or localized in two locations which will be the uh, cytosol as well as the mitochondria because we need certain enzymes that are localized in the mitochondria and some other enzymes that are localized in the uh, cytosol so in the mitochondria we will st- we start the Krebs, uh, sorry urea cycle by conjugation of uh, carbon dioxide with water generating carbonic acid or bicarbonate molecule in this case uh, and the bicarbonate molecule is going to be converted to what's called carbamol phosphate هلا هاي هو ATP molecules فهذول بنحسبهم في energy consumption that will be uh, used for the urea cycle or during the urea cycle Uh, the carbon phosphate is going to conjugate an ornithine. هلا الاستفاده من هاي الخطوه اللي هو تكوين الكربون والفوسفيت اللي هو انا اخذت واحد من الامونيا مولكيولز ربطته مع الكربون ديوكسيد اللي هو صار على شكل بايكربونيت مولكيول اند بهي الحاله انا تخلصت من واحد امونيا مولكيول انجاز التعبير. And this step is catalyzed by carbon phosphate synthase type phosphate synthase type 2 as an enzyme which is another story it's not included in the urea cycle هلا ال product اللي صار معنا conjugated with ornithine which is another amino acid by the way to form what's called sterilin او انا مش مهتم كثير في الانزيمز الموجودين هون just to know the the rotation of the urea cycle هلا الستيرلين will be transported to the cytosol and converted to uh, arginine succinate by conjugation of aspartate so The second u- uh, u- uh, ammonia molecule will be, and the first one is from the free uh, ammonia molecule. In order to generate two ammonia molecule containing, or two ammonia containing molecule, who are arginine uh, By Lyase enzyme, this molecule will be broken to generate fumarate and arginine, which contains the two ammonia molecules. And the arginase enzyme, which is very important to remember as an enzyme, Uh, will be will convert the arginine to ornithine by releasing of the uh, two ammonia molecules with the so that is previously conjugated with the ammonia as a urea and the urea is going to be transported to the uh, urine system and excreted outside of the body as well as certain amount of ammonia برضو بيضل في عندنا مجموعة من الأمونيا أو كمية من الأمونيا will be secreted in the circulatory system هلا هذا باختصار اللي هو الوصف العام ليوريا سايكل. هلا لانه في اشياء اهم من التفاصيل البسيطه الموجوده هون اي هاف تو موف تو ذا نيكست ليكتشر اللي هو بيتكلم عن الايثانول بيكوز اتس فيري امبورتنت تو ستدي اور تو هاف ان ايديا ات ليست اباوت ذا ايثانول ميتابوليزم هاو ذا ليفر از جوينج تو ميتابوليز ذا ايثانول مولكيول. Hala, first of all, we have to know that we have uh, two systems that can deal with the ethanol molecule in our body. Uh, I mean two routes uh, that will convert the ethanol to other products in order to be non-toxic at least and consuming the ethanol molecule to produce certain other molecules or metabolites. So first of all, the liver is the major organ that is responsible for the metabolism of ethanol or alcohol molecules. Basically, if you have the simple form of alcohol, ethanol, the ethanol is going to be converted by what's called alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme. And when we say dehydrogenase enzyme, it means that an AT molecule or an ADH, depending on the direction of the reaction. So the ethanol will be converted by alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme to what's called acetaldehyde. And the acetaldehyde is a toxic molecule that has to be metabolized. So we have next step or another step that is responsible for the conversion of acetaldehyde to acetate molecule. 
and the acetate is going to be transported outside of the mitochondria and liver cell to other organ organs, and it can be converted to acetyl-CoA, which can be consumed actually by these cells in order to produce energy. Ethanol can be used for the production of energy. Or may someone say, no, this is good. But uh, unfortunately, this is the, not the complete story and the right story to talk about the, or to describe the situation of the ethanol because we will have many other uh, side effects or many other tokens that will be generated as well as affecting the metabolic pathways that we will have in the liver. The ethanol is going to be converted to acetaldehyde by alcohol dehydrogenase and then acetaldehyde will be converted to acetate by uh, acetaldehyde uh, dehydrogenase enzyme. And uh, during this process, you are going to generate one, two and ADH molecules. And the acetate will be transported to peripheral organs and by acetyl-CoA select acetate to acetyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA can enter the Krebs cycle to produce energy. هلا بشكل مبسط جدا اذا بدي احسب كميه الطاقه اللي تنتج من هاي العمليه اي هاف تو كالكوليت ذا ان اي دي اتش مولكيول ريديوسينج كاباسيتي انه ال ان اي دي اتش از جوينج تو بي ترانسبورتد اور كونسيومد باي يعني هي مش كونسيومد ولكن هي ريديوسينج ايجنت للالكترون ترانسبورت تشين اند ايفينشولي ويل جينيريت انرجي فروم ذا ان اي دي اتش مولكيولز بس مش منهم بمعنى اخر بواسطتهم احنا بنكون اي تي بي because they are going to report chain. As well as the acetyl CoA that will be generated will be consumed during the Krebs cycle and it will generate an ADH molecules as well as FADH2 molecules. For uh, ethanol can produce certain amount of energy. energy. We have other interfering metabolic steps that we have to understand today. How the body is going to consume or metabolize the uh, the ethanol molecule. Remember that like up to 5% of ingested ethanol is going to be metabolized by tongue, mouth, esophagus, and stomach. Why is that? Because those organs uh, have uh, cells that can metabolize uh, ethanol. الكومبوننتس الضروريه عشان الميتابوليزم للايثانول موجودين في هذول الخلايا اللي هم الانزيم في الميتوكوندريا اند سو اون سو وي كان اور ذا بادي كان ميتابولايز اب تو 5% اوف ذا انجستد ايثانول بات ايثانول از جوينج تو بي ميتابولايز باي ذا ليفر سيل اند وي هاف لايك فروم 2 تو 10% ديبيندينغ اون ذا كونسامشن اوف ذا ايثانول اور الكوهول ويل بي اكسكريتد ثرو ذا لانج اور ذا كيدني اللي هم الاكسكريتوري systems. ففي عندنا the majority of the uh, ethanol is going to be metabolized by the liver. Inside the liver, we have two routes for the metabolism. زي ما حكينا قبل شوي وصفناها بوصف بسيط جدا. إنه the the major route is uh, conversion of ethanol, which is a toxic molecule, by cytosolic enzyme, اللي هو ال alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme, and it will produce an ADH, and the next step in the mitochondria is the conversion of acetaldehyde by acetaldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme to acetate, which is less toxic molecule, and it's going to be transported to peripheral tissues in order to be converted to uh, acetyl-CoA molecule. The second route, which is a new one for you, I think, is the microsomal ethanol MEOS system. And uh, uh, for the moderate drinkers, if you would, uh, like 10 to 20% of the ethanol is going to be metabolized by this system. And this system is a group of membranes that have certain uh, complexes on the membrane. And they can actually uh, metabolize or oxidize the ethanol in order to Produce acetaldehyde molecule instead of uh, going through the uh, other steps that we saw before. Which is ethanol to acetaldehyde and acetate. Hal story shway hoon muhtalifa. Which is ethanol will be converted to acetaldehyde through 
certain complexes here وهم عبارة عن cytochrome complexes okay وإذا سمعتوا بإشي اسمه cytochrome P450 هم هذول ال group of cytochromes are localized on this uh, uh, microsomal system والملاحظ إنه الأشخاص اللي فيهم الكحول أو تناول مركبات بتشبه الكحول إنه هذا السيستم عندهم موجود بكثرة بعد آخر هذول الإنزيمز أو هذول الكومبلكسز موجودين بكثرة بالنسبة لهذول الإندفيدجوالز وهي المشكلة راح تصير بعدين إنه راح تصير في عندهم kind of tolerance to certain drugs or alcohol itself that's why they are going to drink more and more of these molecules in order to be uh, affected by these uh, molecules هلا الشيء المختلف تماما هون انه في عندنا الديوسينج ايجنت دخل على الموضوع اللي هو ال ان اي دي بي اتش مولكيول معنى ذلك يعني عمالي بستهلك ال ان اي دي بي اتش اللي انا كنت بيوم الايام بحاجته للانابوليزم ان اوردر تو ريديوس الايثانول مولكيول تو برودوس اسيتيل ديهايد باي ذا مايكروسومال سيستم وهذا الشيء بدي تربط لي اياه مع الشيء اللي تكلمنا بعد عنه قبل شوي كونسمشن اوف ان اي دي بي اتش كومباند ويز Production of NADH molecule. هذا حيعمل لي شوية differences في the concentration of these molecules. باختصار رح يكون في عندي high concentration of NAD or NAD. ورح يكون في عندي low concentration of NADPH molecule. Okay. فبنذكر هذول concepts نربطهم بالmetabolism in general. And what's the effect of or what are the effects of these molecules if they are found in high or low concentration and we are going to discuss these stories so don't worry هلا الالكوهول ديهيدروجينيز اللي هو الانزيم مسؤول عن فيرست ستيب بالراوت الاول اوكي which is the cytosolic and we have another alcohol dehydrogenase in the mitochondria اللي هو cytosolic one uh, we have classes of alcohol dehydrogenase okay depending on the uh, subunits that are forming these classes And we have genes that are responsible for the production of these alcohol dehydrogenase classes. اللي هو gene one, two, three. Subunit موجود فيه alpha, beta, gamma. According to these subunits, we have class one, class two, class three, four, and five. As simple as that. Depending on the type of the. مش بس السبيونات سو ما أدو إنه صنف من بهذا التصنيف. Okay. The localization of these enzymes where they are found. As well as the uh, kinetic of these uh, enzymes. Hala, the class one, the most important they have low Km. Meaning, after that, they have high affinity affinity to the ethanol. Okay, and they are found on many tissues. The second one, the class two, has very high Km localized in liver and GI tract. Okay. هلا class 3 is abundant or, or ubiquitous بسموه بمعنى اخر انه موجود في معظم الخلايا and relatively inactive toward ethanol which is very strange and it's active for other types of alcohol molecules so depending on the uh, substrate اللي هو في الحالتين الاولى كان ethanol ولكن في difference in the Km we have different type of substrate that's why we have class 3 And the third one, class four, sorry, has also high Km and it's targeting as a substrate medium chain alcohol molecule as a dehydrogenase in the retinal. And the last one has some activity toward ethanol and this class at, is found in, in higher concentration in the fetal liver. So depending on the mode of expression where it's expressed or specific expression and as with enzymes we have these classes of enzymes اللي هما الالكوهول ديهيدروجينيز انزيم هلا السؤال اللي بتبادر لكل لذهن كل واحد انه uh, do we have uh, alcohol dehydrogenase since we born yes we have it there طيب معناه انه الايثانول is a, a normal substrate to our body No, ما بنقولهاش هيك، ما نحكيش انه الايثانول از نورمال سبستريت، بس ذا بادي از اميونايزد، اي مين بريبيرد اجينست ذا اكسبوجر اوف ذيس الكوهول مولكيولز، هلا الالكوهول تايبس اوف الكوهول مولكيولز ذات كود بي انتروديوسد اور انجستد باي ذا بادي، 
because we, we have a lot of environmental factors that will introduce these molecules to our body. Acetaldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme, which is the next one or the second enzyme during the metabolism of the alcohol in the first drought, can end in aldehyde dehydrogenase, but then, uh, sorry, alcohol dehydrogenase and acetaldehyde dehydrogenase enzyme. Uh, this enzyme actually. has two types, the dehydrogenase type 2, which is the mitochondrial enzyme, and we have cytosolic 1 LHO type 1. And more than 80% of acetaldehyde oxidation in the human liver is normally catalyzed by this type. So this is the major one. I can have it with both like. The amount of acetaldehyde will be metabolized by cytosolic 1 because we could have a leak of the acetaldehyde from the mitochondria to the cytosol. Uh, the acetate molecule that will be just the dehyde molecule has a fate, and the fate is very common since to be converted to uh, acetaldehyde molecule by acetyl-CoA synthetase enzyme. And synthetase means that we have ATP. That's why we have T here. Synthase implies that we don't have ATP. Okay, so this process requires the presence of ATP as well as coenzyme A in order to generate a style CoA, which will be used during the Krebs cycle. So this is what we, what we can have in by the action of the uh, acetyl CoA synthase type 1 as a cytosolic enzyme, which means that we have type 2 as an enzyme. And it's localized in certain specific tissues, normal heart, skeletal muscles. And it's mitochondrial one in order to convert الاسيتيت تو استايل كو اي هلا الادفانتج لهذا انه طوالي بيدخل بالكريبس سايكل بينما هناك هو مرشح انه يكون فاتي اسيد بريكيرسر مولكيول اللي موجود في السيتوسول لانه عشان اكل ات هاز تو بي ان ذا مايتوكوندريال ماتريكس اوكي سو ات ويل بي ايزير فور ذيس مولكيول تو جو تو كريبس سايكل ان ذيس تيشوز راذر ذان فورمينج ليبيدز ان ذا ليفر that's why we have two these, oh, I mean, two isoforms or two types of the uh, acetaldehyde or a state still uh, still co synthetase enzyme. Uh, talking about the microsomal uh, ethanol oxidizing system, the whole other system, what is it actually? And uh, we have complex on this membrane. We have a complex on. Uh, عشان نوضح الآلية اللي بصير فيها التعامل مع الالكوهول مولكيولز and that's how we use the NADPH during this system in order to gain electrons and these electrons will be used by the cytochrome system and we have different types of these cytochrome systems depending on the uh, uh, gene that is forming these cytochromes so we have a lot of genes in general this cytochrome system is responsible for the detoxification of or um, foreign molecules by increasing the solubility uh, of these molecules and the solubility will be increased by introducing uh, hydroxyl group i mean generating of uh, hydroxylated molecules that will be secreted by the uh, excretory system so this is the major function of the cytochrome systems well i can feel how it would do the ethanol molecule there is another story will do a conversion of the ethanol to a still died molecule and that's the, the point where the nadp molecule is going to use that still died molecule Hala. The cytochrome system عبارة وبيختصرون دائما بالCYP اللي هم مثال عليهم cytochrome p450 واحد من اشهر cytochromes the most abundant one والسبب في تسميته بانه P450 انه هو له ابزوربنس معين ل ويف لينث معين اللي هو ال 450 نانومتر عشان هيك هم سموهم P450 او P450 هلا هم سايتوكروموس ان جنرال فاخذوا كلمه CY P لانه من بيجمنت لانه فصار اسم CYP P450 على هذول السيتوكروم سيستمز موجود منهم عدة أنواع السبب في تسميتهم إلى عدة أنواع زي ما حكينا وجود عدة جينات فعلى سبيل المثال إذا كان في عندي سيتوكروم P2E1 الاسم يبدو طويل ومعقد ولكن هو عبارة عن سيتوكروم P450 الجين فاميلي هي عبارة عن جين فاميلي 2 and السبب إنه هذول الجين فاميلي معناه هذول الجينات 
عباره عن مجموعه من الجينات في بينهم تشريبيه بالنسبه للامينو اسيد كونتنت هلا الاي عباره عن سب فاميلي هاي الجين فاميلي فمثلا عندي جين فاميلي 2 بتضم مجموعه من الجينات آه اذا كان التشابه بينهم آه آه هذول الفاميلي بعض الافراد ما نسبته بين 55 ل 60 بالامينو اسيد بصير اسمهم سب فاميلي في نفس الفاميلي فالافراد المتقاربين بالعائله الواحده رح ياخذوا لتر آه كود معين اللي هو الاي على سبيل المثال اند ذا ذا ممبر ان ذيس فاميلي فاميلي ويل بي ويل هاف اور ويل جين انمبر فاذا كان على سبيل المثال آه هذا الاسم موجود عندي فهو عباره تابع للعائله رقم اثنين وجزء من العائلة اللي هم مجموعة من الأفراد بيحملوا تشابه معين لغاية 60% فمسميهم إي وكل فرد من هذولا إذا كانوا خمسة مثلا بالعائلة أو أو سب فاميلي كانوا خمسة من 20 هذول الخمسة راح يكونوا 1 2 3 4 5 فراح يكون عندي إي 1 إي 2 إي 3 إي 4 إي 5 أو إي 5 هلا أو سب فاميلي الثانية راح تكون عبارة عن 2 Uh, A for example instead of E فحسب الكلاسيفيكيشن تبعه حسب التشابه احنا بنصنفه هلا ما علينا هذا الموضوع بس انا حبيت اشرح فيهم زياده لانه بدي تذكر دائما انه هذا الاسم المعقد الموجود هون هو فقط نتيجه وجود بعض التشابهات والاختلافات بين السايت فروم بي 4 عشان هيك في في ضروره انه اصنفهم اوكي هلا الميكروسومال سيستم اللي تكلمنا عنه اللي هو بيتعامل مع الايثانول Uh, is pumpy for the enzymes and there are more than 10 genes or gene families that are responsible for the production of these cytochrome systems uh, and we will have more than uh, 100 different cytochromes or isoforms due to the presence of these uh, gene families لانه عندنا عده جينات وعندنا عده families وعندنا sub families so we'll have like more than 100 uh, The, the most active one or the one uh, the cytochrome with the highest activity is the cytochrome uh, 2E1. This is the reason why this enzyme is it has uh, the highest activity. It's the fact that it works with the alcohol molecule and it has uh, interference with certain uh, treatments or certain uh, drugs, if you would. And this is the thing that I want to talk about today. Chronic consumption of alcohol or ethanol will increase the expression of the uh, cytochrome P450, who are type 2E1, had a normal cytochrome. And I should say that liver cell consumption of alcohol or similar molecules will cause uh, overexpression of these molecules. على هذول الخلايا. السبب إنه في عندنا need for more of these cytochromes لأن الجسم عماله بأخر exposure للإيثانول molecules أو similar molecules وبالتالي بصير الجسم يصنع كميات أكبر فرح تلاحظ أن الناس الالكوهوليك they will express much more of this cytochrome system so what if we have cytochrome systems أحسن أو أكثر رح يكون هذا أفضل من بالنسبة للجسم بحيث أنه كميات الأكبر من الالكوهول this will cause a problem and interference with certain treatments like الفينوباربيتال مولكيولز اوكي okay. uh, اذا الفينوباربيتال مولكيولز is also uh, going to be taken as a drug the 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 cytochrome that is responsible for the treatment or the metabolism of the phenobarbital is cytochrome P452B2 اللي هو other type or another uh, member uh, from a different uh, subfamily اوكي وهذا بيؤدي الى زيشن تبعه من 50 ل 100 مره از ان اكزامبل اوف اذر مولكيولز اور اذر درجز ذات ار ريسبونسبل فور ذا اكسبريشن سو ذا هاي ايثانول اكسبوجر بريفلي ويل انهبيت ذا فينوباربيتال اوكسيدايزنج سيستم اللي هو البي 450 اوكي اند ذس ويل كوز اكوموليشن اوف باربيتيوريت ذات ويل كوز توكسيستي تو ذا بودي سو Uh, to make the story more clear, the condition will be like the following. Exposure to high cytochrome system, and the cytochrome system is going to be responsible for the production of high acetyl-CoA molecule, or acetyl-aldehyde molecules, sorry, as well as free radicals, and eventually 
will cause a liver injury. This is because we have high activity of the cytochrome systems that will be induced by the ethanol, uh, as well as interfering with the phenobarbital that will be toxic. That's why vital individuals, I mean individuals in machine alpha barbital are advised not to drink alcohol. Now, the question that may, may be asked by some of you or some individuals in general, uh, نفس القصة بتنطبق على الكحول إنه ليش في بعض الناس على سبيل مثال استجابتهم كحول من ناحية ال ال addiction for example or اللي هو حالة ال alcoholism اللي بتصير عندهم ليش في اختلاف بين الانديفيدوالز يعني ممكن واحد يضرب مثال إنه في أحد أقاربه بيشرب كميات من الكحول ما في مشكلة الحقيقة الموضوع اللي ذكرته سابقا اللي هو موضوع السيتوكروم with diversity of these cytochromes مرتبط بالجينوتايب للأشخاص okay. وبالتالي الرسبونس للكحول الالكحول مولكيولز أو الإيثانول depends basically on the genotype الجينوتايب معناها نوع السيتوكروم موجود عند هذا الشخص وكمية السيتوكروم الموجودة عند هذا الشخص وهذا قد يكون مدخل لي لأنه كثير ناس بيسألوا عن, عن الأبحاث إنه أنا بدي أعمل بحث على سبيل المثال خليني أعطي هنت هون إحنا ممكن نروح ندور على جينوتايب معين، بوليمورفيزم معين، في سايتوكروم معين اللي هو على سبيل المثال 2E1، أوكي؟ في population معين individuals، وهذول individuals عمل يت الاستجابة مختلفة متباينة، يعني different responses لهذا الدرج، ممكن يكون أي درج. فا we could investigate the genotype، ممكن نلاقي فروقات، ممكن ما نلاقي فروقات، فهذا هذا مثلاً واحد من ال ideas اللي ممكن نعملهم كريسيرش. متعلق بالسايتوكروبس والايديا البسيطة هاي ممكن تأخذ عشرات السنين لأن تتكلم عن different families, different members, different types, different genotypes, different drugs وبالتالي رح تكون يعني gate research project طويل جدا فهي مش بس فكرة drug الشيء الآخر مرتبط باستجابة الأشخاص للالكوهول اللي هو drinking history as well as the gender and the quantity or quantity history <coughs> the quantity of alcohol that's going to be consumed during each time. So we have many factors as well as the brand of alcohol, how it's synthesized and so on. Uh, something very important to describe the production of alcohol in one of the middle of alcohol. Uh, uh, the alcohol is the uh, molecule. We have a pair molecule of ethanol. So uh, basically, the route dependent. Why? Because we have two routes that can uh, deal with the uh, ethanol. The first route will give me 13 ATP molecules. We will have them in a very simple way. We have two NADH molecules that will be produced during the conversion of ethanol to acetaldehyde, then to acetate. وبالتالي راح تكون كميتهم 5 ATP إذا كنا بنقول إن المولكيول is responsible for the production of 2.5 and the conversion of acetate to acetyl-CoA molecule by acetyl-CoA synthase enzyme will uh, consume 2 ATP molecules so هذول لازم نحطهم بالاعتبار وعندنا 10 ATPs that will be generated by acetyl-CoA oxidation during the Krebs cycle so total you will have 15 minus 2 so uh, the, the net amount of ATP will be 13 ATP if the ethanol molecule goes through this route. On the second route, maximum of eight ATP molecules that will be generated by the microsomal ethanol oxidizing system. Okay, this is because we will generate a state and that state is going to be converted to uh, a style CoA and completely, uh, we will complete the story of the oxidation process. Why the ethanol has a bad reputation? Why it's toxic? Because of the following things. Ethanol actually or alcohol is associated with fatty liver as well as induction of what's called alcohol-induced hepatitis. And eventually, we will have cirrhosis in the individuals who are addicted to alcohol. Okay. 
And why is that? Because of the previous things that we described. First of all, the alcohol will cause an increase in the NADH to NAD ratio. Okay, and we will describe this later on. What's the effect of this uh, ratio? Okay. okay, so it means that you are going to do more uh, uh, reducing uh, uh, reactions by the presence of the NADH molecule. The acetaldehyde is toxic, so the, the, there will be a high concentration of toxic molecule, and we will discuss this as well. Formation of free radicals by the ethanol, and eventually the hepatic cirrhosis and loss of the liver function. So going to the first thing, who uh, the effect of the NADH to NAD ratio, there will be change in the work formation of fats, as well as ketoacidosis, formation of ketone bodies, lactoacidosis, low formation of keto lactate molecule, and hyperuricemia, and eventually hypoglycemia. الهايبوكلايسيميك كونديشن عشان هيك صار في عندهم نوع من الاحترافية انه مع الكحول وبحطوا شيء اسمه مازات اللي هو اشياء معينة فيها كربوهيدرات واتيفر حتى ما يصير في عنده هايبوكلايسيميك كونديشن لانه كل هذا سببه انه في عندنا فولس انرجي اذا بنرجع هون يا جماعة على الانرجي برودكشن بنلاحظ انه في عملية انتاج للاي تي بي هلا وجود الـ ATP بسبب وجود الـ NADH uh, uh, in higher concentration compared to NAD uh, uh, is described as false energy. It's not true metabolism of the uh, organic molecules like carbohydrates or lipids. So that individual will face what's called a hypoglycemic condition. لأنه ما راح يشعر بالجوع بسبب إنه في عنده energy production وهذا الإنرجي لأنه ما يعني مش بسبب استهلاك الاورجانيك مولكيولز هلا شو اللي بصير بالضبط بالنسبه لهذول الكومبوننتس احنا حكينا انه بسبب الان اي تي اتش راح يصير في عندي تشينج في الفاتي اسيد ميتابوليزم الكيتون باديز از ويل از اللاكتيك اسيدوسس هلا واحده واحده ديورينج ذا هاي كونسنتريشن اوف ان اي تي اتش ديو تو ذا الكوهول كونسمشن اور ايترنال كونسمشن ذي ويل بي انهبيشن فور ذا فاتي اسيد اند ذي ويل بي فورميشن اوف اور اكوموليشن اوف جليسرول فوسفيت and formation eventually of if you end up station of fatty acid if you end up high glycerol molecule low glycerol phosphate you will form fat okay and this fat because it's formed by the induction of alcohol will be called ethanol induced hyperlipidemia these individuals will form high concentration of lipids due to the accumulation of the precursors of the surely it will cause what's called uh, statiosis uh, or hepatic statiosis condition or fatty liver and from the metabolic point of view uh, view sorry uh, in general uh, the uh, uh, consumption of alcohol will cause accumulation of VLDL that will be generated from the fatty acids that will be also generated from the interference of alcohol. We'll see the alcohol will interfere. So uh, if you have high concentration of acetyl-CoA, and you have the acetate or acetate ketone bodies, the fats will be accumulated because you are not consuming these fats because of the NADH accumulation. And if you have the NADH, you will be able to use it. OK? Now, the ketoacidosis here, we'll see it in the slide after this. Uh, and it will be like the following. This is how we generate ketones or ketone bodies uh, because we have uh, acetyl-CoA production uh, due to the uh, formation of uh, uh, alcohol uh, oxidation or alcohol reduction, in fact, uh, in certain cases and oxidation in other cases. Uh, lactic acidosis, how we uh, going to gain lactic acidosis or hyperuricemia or hypoglycemia. This is what's going to happen. If you have high concentration of NADH due to alcohol consumption, these molecules will push the reaction toward the glycerol phosphate formation, and then the fat, okay? And here, 
react to form lactate. So that's why we'll have lactic acidosis, okay? And this lactic acidosis will inhibit the urea cycle in order to convert uric acid, oh, sorry, not the urea cycle, I'm very sorry, uh, uh, production of uh, uric acid and transport it to the urine. So the uric acid will be accumulated. That's where we will have hyperuricemia, okay? And eventually they will have gout, individuals in the, in the addicted to alcohol. And uh, we will have hypoglycemia because we have uh, the other gluconeogenic molecules that will be converted to lactate rather than be converted to glucose. So the mechanism will be toward the formation of the lactate and it will be fed by these amino acids instead of feeding the gluconeogenesis or glucose formation. Uh, hypoglycemic condition. The whole portrait will be like the following. So consumption of alcohol, and this is how we convert alcohol to acetate and production of an ATH. It will affect, uh, we'll have uh, uh, free radical production, but from the metabolic point of view, we'll have effect on all of the other metabolic pathways, starting from the uh, ketoacidosis, fatty acid uh, statiosis, hyperlipidemia, hypoglycemia, and lactic acidosis. And in the slides that I have a head, okay, starting from here, and then eventually you will get this final portrait starting from the ethanol consumption. Okay, I have a good hack at the microsome system will consume an ADPH that is very important for the uh, production of or. Uh, actually uh, anabolic pathways anabolic pathway and uh, as well it will interfere with the drug metabolism cytochromal detoxification cytochromal detoxification of drugs it will be inhibited because you are consuming then ADPH Molecules, as well as the continuum of the hash to the antioxidative effect also is going to be inhibited by the consumption of NADPH molecules. So the alcohol consumption is not easy as, as much we thought. Okay. Hala al-acetyl aldehyde itself as a toxic molecule, hatta law anu ihna minhawl al-acetate, still uh, under consumption of high concentration of alcohol, we will generate high concentration of acetaldehyde. Al-acetaldehyde, is highly active molecule and it's going to conjugate uh, either amino group or sulfate proteins, uh, specifically nucleotides as well and the phospholipids. Okay, so uh, the acetaldehyde and alcohol-induced hepatitis is caused because we have protein accumulation in the liver because it's conjugated with the acetaldehyde, as well as the free radical formation acetaldehyde binds directly to glutathione and it will inhibit the action of the glutathione uh, uh, against the oxidative stress free radicals like our ROS reactive species like the H2O2 molecules. Uh, uh, in general, we are funneling uh, high production of free radicals. And these free radicals are very dangerous molecules that are going to attack our cells. And because all of these molecules are accumulated in the liver, the liver is going to be uh, the uh, uh, victim for these uh, molecules. Uh, the selection of uh, free radicals because of many actions. First of all, the cytochrome system itself is going to be inhibited because we are forming or consuming actual NADPH molecules that are required for the uh, uh, reactivation of glutathione, as well as the acetaldehyde is, is responsible for the conjugation of uh, uh, or conjugation with glutathione. I will tell you, are diminishing the activity of the antioxidative mechanism that we have. Uzeem Hakin al NADH molecule in Tekawan to our Kawunum Lashkar, but how can it be in Kohora Adila, the activation of the electron transport chain and production of electrons that are responsible for the periodical uh, formation. This slide will tell you all the information that we have today about the action of alcohol starting from the ethanol and formation of acetaldehyde and going through, through all of these steps. In the film, in the film, 
he can or she can go through this slide easily and understand molecules are toxic or ethanol is toxic molecule. هيك بنكون خلصنا المحاضرة الثالثة بالترتيب بالنسبة للبيوكيمستري. هلا بضل عندنا آه الشيء الآخر اللي بدي أحكي عنه اليوم آه بآخر محاضرة أو آخر سلايد خلي أسميهم اللي هو الليفر فانكشن تيست بس عشان إنه ما يصير عملية إرهاق I gonna stop just for a few minutes and we'll continue. خليني هون بس أعمل stop للريكورد. مين معي مين عنده أسئلة هلا وقفت التسجيل شوية رح نرجع within a few minutes بين عندي 44 شخص بس مش عارف اذا صحيين ولا لا لانه انا احيانا بعملها يعني لما تكون محاضرات ما لهاش علاقه بفتح السيستم بضل شغال على اساس اني حاضر المحاضره 